the main benefit here is just to compare the signals and if we see something like it's completely low down there then we know that something is not right or completely high and so on especially is uh, useful if you have um, another Commodore 64 that you compare signals between boards that you're repairing and the board that is uh, completely working <laughs> Hi, today I would like to talk about preparing Commodore 64 boards. You know, sometimes it's just enough to use a multimeter to check all the voltages, um, to you run dead test cartridge to detect possible faulty ICs, um, maybe touch a little bit to see if any one of them is overheating, uh, replacing them and uh, that would solve the problem. Uh, but sometimes issues are not so easy to detect. So in that case we can <coughs> use uh, some logic probes, uh, something like this. Uh, this is very cheap one that I bought from eBay. Um, but uh, it's still very very handy tool so <clears throat> with this um, logic probe we can detect if there is any data on the on the line that we are uh, measuring so are we having uh, some useful signals or we have um, um, logic low logic high and so on but uh, what this will not tell us is uh, how the signal look like so in that case what we actually need is a oscilloscope but what to do if you if you don't have any like me well <clears throat> we can use arduino now any of these uh, arduino uh, boards um, um, that we can use um, because they have um, analog to digital converter um, in matter of fact it's a 10-bit analog to digital converter and we have here eight, eight available uh, analog pins, analog input pins that we can use and try to uh, probe our Commodore 64 board. Now, <clears throat> the only problem that we have uh, is um, uh, the fastest that we can run this um, analog to digital converter on Arduino Uno is um, up to two. 200 uh, kilohertz sampling and it's it's not even that it's it's um, not, not even um, 200 so um, and uh, Commodore 64 um, works on 1 megahertz so we have CPU that runs on 1 megahertz um, WIC is on 2 um, memory um, works on 2 megahertz so uh, it's not ideal so this Arduino is not um, is not definitely not a replacement for oscilloscope, but I believe that in, it, it can be something in between um, between this um, logic probe and and real oscilloscope. So um, you can see on the screen here that I have a little program. Um, just a one moment. Okay, so it's a um, very, very small program, um, <clears throat> small piece of code in an Arduino IDE that we um, build and upload on Arduino. In, in my case, uh, instead of using Arduino Uno, I use Nano, it's a smaller board, um, easier to use, um, like this. Uh, and uh, and the schematic is um, like this so it's very really really simple um, so like I said we have eight available analog input spins um, we co use one of them um, we need the ground uh, and uh, one of the analog pins that is going to be our input pin that we are connect our probe to and um, let's switch to Arduino IDE so 
Um, um, mm, 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 mm. So here we just uh, have here we have a setup functions that we actually enable uh, just serial communication between uh, Arduino and uh, and uh, PC, uh, and then we have um, configuration for the uh, ADC to be as fast as it it's possibly can. Um, and then we just uh, uh, doing a while loop and just reading the analog pin and uh, converting it, uh, converting the digital value <coughs> from the uh, ADC converter uh, to between to map it between zero and five volts. And what we have uh, in Arduino IDE as a default tool is something called serial plotter and this tool is very helpful um, especially in our case today uh, so this is similar like serial monitor except um, the values that we um, uh, sending uh, from Arduino to PC and uh, instead just printing on the monitor it, the values get plotted on the screen on, on, on the graph so this is how it looks like so the reason uh, why we uh, put these two values 0 and 5 like a min and max uh, 0 volts and 5 volts just to to keep this plot in the focus uh, to not go all over the screen um, so keep it calm and our uh, value that we actually reading is this green line so it's currently floating in the air so it's connected so if I touch yeah, it changes so if I point um, if I point the probe to the ground you'll see it's directly to the ground so let's try to do some measurements so we have our Arduino Nano uh, ground is connected to the ground we have a probe and uh, for the beginning we will try to measure something uh, that uh, we can easily see and understand so <clears throat> here we have um, a part of the circuit it's connected to U27 chip uh, that's this one and what this does is uh, it uses uh, 9 volts uh, AC and converts it to uh, 50 or 60 Hz depending on uh, PAL or NTSC uh, version um, uh, to digital signal that goes to CIAs and this signal is used to uh, keep tracking of the time um, so let's try to do some measurements um, let me put uh, our graph on the screen okay so what we're measuring here is um, is nothing because the board isn't power on so let's power it on okay so what we are measuring here is uh, 9 volts uh, 5 volts AC um a signal so this is analog input signal and this i see is a logic end so this signal is converted to a digital uh, 50 hertz in my case um, signal that goes to both of these cia chips and because it's low low frequency we can easily uh, see the whole uh, signal so I believe it was this pin here no ah, here we go so this is a uh, same signal going into CIA chip and also going into CIA number two so the next thing that we can uh, try to measure is uh, for example our uh, clock signal that goes to CPU so that is pin number one so this is how it's look uh, how it's look like on the on the on the plot 
um, and this is uh, same signal going out of the CPU okay so the next thing that we can uh, take a look uh, is um, signals that um, PLA chip controls the um, basic kernel and character ROM so let's try to see that so this is a character ROM signal selecting character ROM uh, this is selecting kernel ROM and basic ROM is not active because we don't use it um, at the moment so the next thing that we can measure is um, um, data bus uh, so we will try to measure um, bits on the memory so this signal is uh, bit number zero this is how it look like this is bit number one and it's not really important that we don't see exactly the whole uh, signals but um, the main benefit here is just to compare the signals and if we see something like it's completely low down there then we know that something is not right or completely high and so on especially is uh, useful if you have um, another Commodore 64 that you compare signals between boards that you're repairing and the board that is uh, completely working and uh, <coughs> what else can we try to measure okay so let's try to uh, measure a reset signal so we i power down the board um, the reset signal is coming to cpu on pin 40 so when we power the board the um, signal should be low and then it should go high low and high so that's uh, really nice and the only um, slightly warning that I can give you uh, for this is um, uh, this is all fine here because this is just uh, 5 volts uh, but uh, SID chip and WIC chip uh, have 12 volts input uh, lines so this is very where, where you need to be very careful and um, uh, I know because I learned that on the hard way so let's try to measure one more thing um, that's um, we will try to measure on the CIA number one um, we will try to measure keyboard uh, lines so um, scanning of the keyboard signals so let's go so you, you see that we are receiving the scanning lines scanning signals so in case that you don't have a working keyboard and something is wrong you can check this way is everything okay <coughs> and there you go <coughs> so um like I said, it's it's very useful when you don't have a um, proper oscilloscope uh, to use something like this. And this is not only a thing that is um, um, not only thing that is uh, Arduino used for, because um, you can find online the the way how to use um, Arduino um, to make a memory tester. It's also <coughs> possible to test all the um, ROMs and uh, even the PLA chip uh, so <clears throat> you can build your own PLA tester based on Arduino Uno um, or Nano or whatever um, so there you go so this was um, um, using Arduino to help repairing the Commodore 64 boards and that's all for me for today see you next time and goodbye